Warning, this channel is meant for viewers 21 plus and was created for educational and documentary purposes only. Beginner Buzz does not condone illegal activity and certainly does not sell anything, so don't even ask. Seriously. How's it growing everyone? So we've done a living soil episode before, but this one's going to be a little different. Sure, we'll give you the rates and the amounts we use, but this time we'll be delving a little bit deeper to show what we're looking for in this specific season. You know we're trying to make this our full-time jobs, but YouTube is, well, YouTube when it comes to cannabis. Despite this, we continue to find ourselves surrounded by nothing but love and support from this community. If you did want to support the channel a little more, the best way to do that is through our Patreon. With a private Discord, additional in-depth videos, Patreon-exclusive merch and live streams, or even the chance to smoke face-to-face -face with the buds, every tier gets something. The amount of support we've already received has been absolutely mind-blowing, but we wanted to take some time out to show our appreciation for our newest patrons. So, a big shout out and an official thank you to... Mine? And Simple Rick. We love you guys. Really. Alright, let's get back to it. Alright guys, so we're glad to be back with you guys for another episode, but is there something different going on around here? Last update, we gave you guys the results of our second organic season featuring, well, at the end there, our cookie dough. We made some changes and noticed drastic results, but with that plant chopped, dried, trimmed, and curing, uh, what's next? A new season, duh. <laughs> so, first things first, before we can even pick and plant our genetics, those of you following long enough will know that we make our own quote-unquote living soil. Typically, living soil is... soil? Dead decaying matter that used to be living along with a variety of rocks and minerals. Along with that, soil usually consists of bacteria and fungal communities as well. They live symbiotically in your soil to not just break down and make nutrients available to the plant, but even feed the nutrients directly to the plant in some instances. We, however, use cocoa but it's still living soil. For clarity's sake, the bulk of our medium actually consists of the husk of a coconut, thus why we call it cocoa. It's ground up to different grades, but most gardening cocoa comes ground to a relatively ideal size. At the end of the day, it's inert, meaning it holds absolutely no, <laughs> let me say it again, no nutrition for your plants. Its purpose is simple. Since it serves of no nutritional purpose to the plant, cocoa merely holds water and nutrients to the root zone. Why do we do it this way? Well, for the same reason we can still call it a living soil. We're still going to put in all the decaying organic matter, or what will be turned into NPK, and beneficial bacteria that is normally in soil as well as inoculate the medium with mycorrhizae. I don't want to get too far into this, but mycorrhizae are essential beneficial fungi for our plants. We inoculate the medium with spores, the spores inoculate the root zone, and develops a rhizosphere where the fungi lives symbiotically with the plant. And we mean that literally. The fungi attaches to the roots and feeds the plant. This literally doubles your root zone and provides the plant access to nutrients it wouldn't ordinarily have without the fungi. Likewise, the plant produces exudates. Only when the root zone is inoculated with fungi, which is basically sugar, that it feeds back to the fungi through its roots. And the cycle goes round. Like we said, everything does better because of this relationship. The plants, 
the fungi, everything. There are plenty of studies to say so. All of this, the fungi, beneficial bacteria, and NPK are all in our earth dust by the Green Sunshine Company. So that's all we need, pretty much. That and some earthworm castings. It serves a few purposes, including being a great food source for microbes and your beneficial bacteria colonies, rife with micronutrients and matter that can be further broken down and helps with soil consistency. It helps hold everything in there a little better. It also gives the roots something additional to grow into and even helps with water retention by holding water to the roots longer, meaning less frequent waterings, to some extent. Ultimately, growing in this inert cocoa allows us to control exactly how much food this plant has access to feed on. You can certainly grow in soil, but there are already nutrients in the pot. We wanted to control things from the start to finish, and it's actually working out quite well. For the cocoa, we use root soilless. For where we live, it's about the cleanest we have access to, but that's basically what you want something without or a very limited amount of additional materials that will break down and provide nutrients to your plant. Cocoa and perlite, 70-30 mix. That's ideal, but sometimes not perfect. We just do our best, and that's where root soilless comes. Only thing left to do is make the stuff in our tote, and it's pretty simple at this point. Noticing that we went a little heavy on the nutrients, we're backing down to our original rates but the cocoa and earthworm castings are gonna remain the same. For us, we grab our tote, which will also serve as the living soil's brewing location and short-term storage once we put the lid on. Before that, we add our one square foot bag of root soilless, three pitchers, ours is a one gallon pitcher of earthworm castings, and two and a half cups of earth dust base. Now, this number might change, but ultimately, that's because this season will help us finalize our official Beginner Buds Living Soil recipe. Just mix, mist everything down, seal it up, and tuck it away in a corner somewhere for two weeks at least. Toward the end of Edge, we will be specifically paying attention to what nutrient deficiencies we see first and when it kicks in before our first top dress. It will not only tell us if we have enough base in there, but will also let us know our sneaking suspicion. And we've seen some of you read it here, that maybe we should be adding some boost into our base formula to help the plant last longer before needing its first top dress. So we'll be looking out for that first deficiency, which we think will be potassium. But we'll see. And seeing not just what deficiency rises first, but when it shows will help us know how much we should be adding to future batches. We'll see. But that's the plan. We'll get back to you guys next week to show you guys what strains we'll be growing as well as the germination process. But until then, keep learning, keep growing. Catch, Catch you later, guys. guys.